Hey everybody, it's Ron Holtz again. Uh, today is our end of the week common lit lesson that you will be tackling independently. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of advice and a little bit of background on the passage that you're reading and then um, a quick lesson on one of the skills that is being tested. And then many of the other questions are um, skills that we've practiced before, but they're not the lesson that I'm going to give to you right now. So you'll have to use the skills and strategies you already know, read very carefully, enjoy the story. It's a, it's a, it's a fun one, or it's a, the start of a fun one. And uh, just do your best. A little, I'll talk more about this in a, in a minute, but through our common lit lesson, some people have been doing well, a lot of people have not been doing very well. Um, and a lot of it has to do, I think, with just taking your time into questions, just like you would in class. I believe firmly that all of you are good readers and good thinkers. If you take the time and go back and look in the text for your evidence, uh, you do very well. But a lot of time people are guessing and they're doing very badly on these things. So just take your time, read carefully. Um, the guide reading questions are there. Uh, I can see some people getting a lot better at those, that they're getting those in one, um, one I'm saying guess, but it's not really guess, but you're taking only one time to answer those questions, meaning that you're understanding what you're reading, which is great. But then some of us are going on to the, the assessment questions and not doing so well. And I'm not sure if it's because we don't understand the questions or we're just not trying as best we can. Um, looking at a lot of people's written responses, it seems like we're just not trying that hard. Some people are giving me uh, less than like a full sentence response when you know for writing, if we're answering a question, we're giving our answer to the question, we're backing up with evidence from the text, and we're explaining that answer. Uh, if you don't do those things, then you're not putting in your best effort. So just make sure that when you're doing these things, um, I'm not so worried about your grade, I'm just worried about you trying your best all the time. So uh, with those pieces of information behind us, let's take a look over here. The passage that you're going to be reading today is called The Worst Birthday, uh, and it's the very but it's the very first part of the very first chapter of Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, which is a is the second of the seven Harry Potter books. Um, I'm sure many of you have not read them yet, but I'm sure many people have watched the movies. Um, they are the highest selling movies of all time, most watched movies of all time, so they're very, very popular. If you haven't, they're great. You should check them out. Uh, the books, as you can see here, this is uh, a text that's written for sixth grade. Um, usually around 4th, 5th, 6th grade is when students can um, start reading Harry Potter books, but they, they do get more mature and more complicated as they go along, and so um, these are a little bit above our level. But the reason why we're reading from here is because, if you don't know, Harry is a wizard, and the world that this, these books take place in, um, there are people who are wizards and witches who have magic, and they go to a magic school called Hogwarts where they learn how to use that magic. And then there are people called muggles who don't practice magic, and they are us, the people who don't have magical powers. And uh, Harry, um, in the very first book, is turns 11 years old, and he's been living the last 10 years with his muggle aunt and uncle who just don't treat him very well. And in the first book, he finds out that he does have magical powers and that he actually gets to spend a year in Hogwarts learning how to become a better wizard. Um, at the end of the year, though, he has to go back to his uh, muggle aunt and uncle. His parents are um, have died, and uh, we find out how in here. But uh, he, the, the aunt and uncle just treat him horribly. And so um, this first chapter is the very beginning, or this article here, sorry, or this page here, is the very first part of the first chapter of that book. And it's when Harry is back for summertime at his aunt and uncle's house, who again are treating him very badly. Uh, and just like in the first book, it, the very beginning takes place on his 11th birthday, this takes place on his 12th birthday, but it's called The Worst Birthday. And so as you're reading this, um, make sure to take notes on how each character responds to magic, uh, but also just take notes on how different characters treat Harry and how Harry is feeling. Um, what we're actually going to get a little bit of practice on before we start uh, is connected to, it's going to be connected to assessment question number three. It says, which of the following best defines what, about, uh, what Uncle Vernon means when he says abnormality in paragraph 19? And so the question is asking us what a word means. Um, and just like we have practiced many times, to figure out what a word means, we use our context clues. We use um, the words either inside the word or outside the word to help us figure out what the word means. 
I'm going to very quickly just re go over, sorry, I should have had this up already, um, some of the things that we've seen before. Context clues. All right. I'm actually going to start here. Okay. We can look inside the word to figure out what it means. We can look around the word to figure out what it means. And we can use the whole story to figure out what it means, too. Um, in this case, we're actually going to use a lot of around the word and the whole story. The author, J.K. Rowling, does a great job of actually kind of summarizing the, the previous book, the first book in this chapter, and also explaining a lot of words um, almost immediately after she says them. And so as we're reading the story, these are the two that we're going to use the biggest. Uh, I'm not really going to talk about using opposites. Go away. So... Uh, I'm going to give a couple examples, not this one, but a few words that you might not know what they mean, but then show how you can use the words around it to figure out what the word means. And so, for example, uh, here you go. It says, he missed Hogwarts so much it was like having a constant stomachache. He missed the castle with its secret passageways and ghosts, his classes, but perhaps not Snape, the potions master. And so not necessarily um, figuring out what the word Snape means, but you can figure out who he is, though perhaps not Snape. It says right afterwards, the potions master. So he must be the master of potions. You can figure that out from there. Uh, the male arriving by owl, eating banquets in the Grant Hall. Um sleeping in his four-poster bed in the tower dormitory. Now, you might not know what a dormitory is, okay, but you can make it a guess. It says sleeping in his four-poster bed okay, in a tower, and so a dormitory must be a place where people sleep because it says sleeping in his bed in the dormitory. That's actually what a dormitory is. It's a place where people sleep when they're going to school. You'll see them in college as well. And so, again, if you're not sure what the word means, you can use the words around it to help figure it out. Same thing here, visiting the gamekeeper, Hagrid, in his cabin next to the Forbidden Forest on the grounds, and especially Quidditch. Huh, I'm not sure we know what that means, but the most popular sport in the Wizarding World. And so if you don't know what Quidditch is, it tells you right afterwards, the most popular sport in the Wizarding World. And then it actually even goes on to explain more. Six tall goalposts, four flying balls, and 14 players on broomsticks. It even goes to explain a little bit more of what Quidditch is using the words around it. Okay. So... Um, this is just a, a couple of examples how you can use the words around the words to help figure out what a word means. Again, Quidditch, if you're not sure what it means, right next to it says the most popular sport in the Wizarding World, and then gives some more descriptions. A dormitory, it says sleeping in his four-poster bed in the dormitory, so a dormitory must be a place where people sleep. Um, we can find examples of this all over the place. Right here it says, uh, precisely, now we should aim to get in a few good compliments at dinner. Petunia, any ideas? You may know what the word compliments mean, but if you don't, it says here, Vernon tells me you're a wonderful golfer, Mr. Mason. Do tell me where you bought your, breasts, uh, your, your best dress, no, just your dress, Mrs. Mason. These are nice things that people are saying, right? She's saying nice things to these people. Oh, compliments must mean nice things or nice words. And so, again, all throughout here, if you're not sure what a word means, the author does a great job of trying to explain what that word means with words around it. And so when you get to this one, question number three, which of the following best defines what Uncle Vernon means when he says abnormality in paragraph 19? When you get to it, I warned you I'll not tolerate mention of your abnormality under this roof. You can use the words around it to figure out what he is meaning by that, the word abnormality. And then also, number four, asks you to use evidence from the text to help back it up. You can actually use these pieces of evidence to help you make a smart guess about what that word means. It's a very important skill to have as you're reading more and more challenging books. If you want to know and how to understand them, using your context clues, using the words around other words to help figure them out, it's a great way to improve your reading level and reading abilities. Ah! Whoopsies. Sorry. So, that's all. Uh, take your time as any quiz. Read carefully. Do your best thinking. When you get to the questions, don't just guess. Go back into the text. Find your evidence. You can use the annotation tools. You can use um, the lesson I just gave you. All the things you can. And when you do your writing, answer the question. 
prove it with evidence from the text, explain that evidence um, so that it makes sense to you and so it makes sense to the reader. That will improve everyone's scores and you can feel very proud of yourself of how well you've done on a very, I'm not going to say a, very, it's a, a more challenging text than what you usually read, but it's a text that I think you can easily handle as long as you take your time. Good luck. Do your best.